Just an appetizer anymore, Chef Taco. Uh, <laughs> Whoa, sorry, still having a bit of trouble with the ceiling fan. <laughs> uh, well, hello, I'm Taco the Octopus, and tonight I'll be cooking your dinner. I thought we'd start with something foul, something well, something something good, not bad, something bird. Yes. What kind of bird? How about something different, like pheasant, or maybe a little grouse on toast? Quail, perhaps? Ooh, they're quite nice. What about thrush, or lark, or fig pecker? Hmm, all good choices. Seagulls, on the other hand, not a good choice. And pelicans? Let me out of here, you carnivorous buffoon! <laughs> Let's just say pelicans are a bit higher on the food chain than most octopi. <laughs> no, today we're going to do something special, something exotic. Something big. <laughs> so without any further ado, let's bring out that bird. It's a chicken. It's a capon. Yeah, but that's still a chicken. Uh, well, yes, technically. And what happened to the ostrich? Uh, he's not feeling well. He's not feeling well. Hmm. A chicken's not very exotic. Uh, but I suppose we can pretend it's a fancy bird. Now, your average chicken is quite a versatile bird. Roasting is wonderful. Broiling, ooh, superb. Frying, grilling, stewing, uh, fine bay. Ah, yes, braising. Delightful choice. Of course, no matter how you cook it, the best bird for any situation is the freshest. I'm not saying you have to build a chicken coop in the backyard. But it doesn't hurt. If you've got some old, ratty clothing, preferably something red, now would be the time to put that on. A rubber apron might also be a good idea. <laughs> uh, running shoes are, of course, a must. In a pinch, a frozen bird will do, assuming it's properly thawed, of course. Under most circumstances, I'd recommend against thawing in the microwave, but... Y y uh, excuse me. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven... Son of a... Uh, that, that'll grow back, yeah. <laughs> Now, as I said, there are numerous established ways to prepare your bird. Tonight, however, we're going to try something different. Something a little more sunburnt. If you know what I mean. Beer can chicken! That's right, we're cooking with barley and hops. Call it a drunken rooster if you like, just don't call it dry, because this is going to be one tender and juicy fowl, full of flavor and, well, very goodness. <laughs> Now, the direct benefits of shoving a can of beer up a bird's backside are twofold. One, you've got yourself an inexpensive upright roaster, perfect for grills, barbecues, and ovens. B, the beer steam cooks the bird with moist heat, sort of like braising it from the inside, thereby making it exceptionally moist and juicy. And two, the bird on the can presentation makes an excellent conversation piece at parties. 
<laughs> now, the first thing you do is drink some of the beer. A better beer will, of course, make this part more enjoyable, but the overall benefit to the bird is negligible. Sorry, we need beer in a can. Your average overpriced, overspiced microbrew only comes in a bottle. Please try again. Yeah, 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 pub drafts are nice, but if you get one of those nitrogen cartridges in the can... <laughs> you'll be pulling chicken parts out of the pool for a week. Try something else. That's probably the best choice for what we have in mind today. Now, before you go impaling your bird on a can of brew, you're going to want to add some flavor. There are numerous methods for doing this, chief among them being rubs, brines, and marinades. Because I'm fond of kitchen gadgets, I'm going to be adding a Cajun marinade via my nifty marinade injector. If you're one of those people who can't watch ER because of all the icky stuff, you may want to turn away now. When injecting, be sure to spread the marinade around by repositioning the needle, but try not to remove it completely. Fewer holes means fewer places for the juicy stuff to escape. The swelling is normal, albeit a little creepy. Once you finish injecting your bird, let it sit in the fridge for at least an hour to soak up the punch. As always, be sure to wash your tentacles immediately after handling any raw meat, and try to keep your countertops as clean as possible. Ew, you definitely don't want any late-night salmonella in there. So, where do you cook it? A grill works great, as long as you use indirect heat. If you're going to cook over char or briquettes, let them burn down, then shove them to either side of the barbecue and put the chicken right in the middle. For all you yuppie rednecks out there, we're going to be cooking our bird in an oven, thereby producing a nifty byproduct, beer gravy. Preheat the oven to 350 degrees. A four pound bird should take a little over an hour to reach the 165 degrees necessary to be fully cooked. A remote meat thermometer lets you keep an eye on the bird's temperature without opening the oven door and losing the heat. For those of you thinking about trying this with a much larger bird, and hence more cans of beer, <laughs> after your bird is cooked, you'll notice the can still has quite a bit of flavorful liquid inside it. Do not, I repeat, do not drink it. While I'm very fond of the local emergency room staff, I try to avoid third-degree burns whenever possible. Yeah! Uh, do, however, cook up the fat drippings with a little flour to make a roux, then add the remaining beer and, um, perhaps a little chicken broth and reduce into... Ah, a wonderful beer gravy. Isn't modern food science wonderful? Beer can chicken. It's plump, succulent, and incredibly delicious. What could be more appealing?